A function is just something that takes an input value and assigns it to exactly one output value. You can kind of think of a function as a vending machine. The input on the vending machine would be the code that you type in, and the output would be the pop or candy or whatever that you chose that comes out of the vending machine. So a function takes an input value and it assigns an output value. You put something in the function and it gives you something out. One very important rule about functions is that a function can only assign one output to an input value. For example, with the vending machine, if I plug in the code D4 and it drops a bag of pretzels, the next time I go to enter the code D4, it has to give me a bag of pretzels. So it can't assign more than one output to an input value. Same thing with C2. If I plug in the code C2 and it gives me chips, the next time I plug in C2, it has to give me a bag of chips again. Remember, in order to be a function, it has to assign exactly one output to each input value. So if you look at the mapping on the left, every input is assigned to only one output. If I enter the code D4, I get pretzels. If I enter the code D5, I also get pretzels. That's okay, that just would be if I had two slots right next to each other in the vending machine and they both had pretzels, that's fine. Um, and then E2, if I enter that code, I, I get a water bottle. So each input is only assigned to one output. This one on the left is a function. If you look at this part right here, if I enter the code D4, this says that I'll get either pretzels or chips. This means there's something wrong with this vending machine. In order to be a function, if you enter the same code, you should get the same thing every time. So if I enter the code D4, I can only get one thing out. I can't have it be matched up with two different objects. So this one here is not a function because this input value has been assigned to more than one output value. The examples that we just looked at were drawn as mappings, um, but a function can also be represented as a set of ordered pairs or as a table. So let's look at these two examples to see if we can determine whether they're functions or not. When you have a set of ordered pairs, the x values are always the input values and the y coordinates are the output values. So this says that when I plug in 0, the output is 1. When I plug in 2, I get 3. When I plug in 4, it assigns it to the 7. And when I plug in 2, the output is 9. So if my input values were 0, 2, 4, and 2. Do you see how it has two inputs that are the same? So here's an input of 2 and here's an input of 2. This time when I plugged in 2, it assigned it to 3. And over here when I used 2 as an input, it assigned it to 9. That's kind of like the vending machine example where it assigned it to two different things in the vending machine, pretzels and chips. And this is a problem. If I plug in 2 as my input value, I need to get out the same exact output value. So since this set of ordered pairs has assigned 2 to two different outputs, this is not a function. If we look over here, this table has assigned 3 to 9. When we plug in negative 1, we get 7. When we plug in 4, we get 10. And when we plug in 5, we get 9. No input value has been entered more than once, and each one has only been assigned to one y value. So this one is a function. Um, it can be tempting to say that it's not because you see these two 9s here. And that's okay. That's just like if the vending machine had two slots that both gave out pretzels. Um, this is like it has two different values that'll give you nine. And that's okay. That's not a problem. As long as every X is only paired with one Y. A function can also be shown as a graph. Um, so if you're given a graph and asked if it's a function, if it helps, you can start writing out some of the ordered pairs. Um, so if I look on this circle here, I see the point. Um, 0, 4. So if, if it helps you to write out some of those ordered pairs to see it, that's fine. 
Um, but then I also see the point down here at 0, negative 4. Um, this is a problem. This means that this graph has taken the input of 0 and assigned it to 4, and it's also taken an input of 0 and assigned it to a negative 4. Um, remember, a function can only take an input value and assign it to one output. So anytime you have um, two different y values that are assigned to the same x, that's a problem. On a graph, you can also use what's called the vertical line test. That says that if you draw a vertical line at any point on the graph, um, it can't cross more than once. If you see this here, it crosses here and down here. That means that this x-coordinate, uh, let's see, that looks like about 2, has been assigned to two different y values, and that's a problem. Let's look at one more graph to see if we can tell if it's a function. Uh, remember, if it helps, you can start writing out some of the ordered pairs that you see. So I see the point 0, 0. I see the point, looks like 1, negative 3. I see the point 2, 0. So, so far I don't see any problems. 0 has been assigned to 0. 1 has been assigned to negative 3. 2 has been assigned to 0. Um, so every input, these are different input values, they've all been assigned to only one y value. Um, so, so far that's not a problem. And if I use that vertical line test, Anywhere I draw a vertical line on the graph, I can see that the graph only hits it in one spot. So this coordinate right here, this negative 1 for x, has only been assigned to the 3. It hasn't been assigned to any other y values, so that's okay. And I can draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, and it's only going to hit in one spot. So this one is a function. So anytime you draw vertical lines, it can only cross the graph in one spot. If it crosses the graph more than one time, that means it's not a function.